Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. I have never been one to jump on a meme in a timely manner. I only figured out what the cake is a lie meant last month. I'm several years late to the party on this one, but the hell with it. I'm doing it anyway. About four years ago, there was a video from certain angry clown-themed performers demanding to know how magnets work, but refusing to listen to scientists who would be the best equipped to explain it. In the interest of time, I will spare you my opinion of that. Instead, I will simply answer the question. Consider the humble fridge magnet. You may know it as a bar magnet or even the lodestone. It's composed of a mineral called magnetite, which is an iron oxide composed of iron and oxygen atoms. You've probably seen rust. That's a slightly different iron oxide, one that isn't magnetic. So the type of magnetism exhibited by this magnet is called ferromagnetism, from the Latin word for iron, ferrum. That's also why the symbol for iron on the periodic table is Fe. So when a fridge magnet sticks to the fridge, in this case represented by a paperclip, it's attracted to the iron in the steel. You can also get this ferromagnetism in cobalt and nickel, but it's strongest in iron. There are other types of magnetism, but I am not going to get into them here. Ferromagnets are also called permanent magnets because they're magnetic permanently without having to be persuaded by anything else. You can also create non-permanent magnets from other materials by putting them in a magnetic field. And you can create this field by passing electrical current through a wire, for example. This is more or less what happens in an MRI. So how does electricity relate to magnetism? Well, they both involve a particle called the electron. Electrons are part of the atom, and they're found orbiting the atom's nucleus. Some of them orbit in pairs, and some of them by themselves. Every element has a different number of electrons, and a different way of arranging these electrons, and that determines whether or not they're paired up or singletons. So every electron has two poles, much like the Earth, or a bar magnet. So you can actually think of them as little mini-magnets. When the electrons are paired, those poles cancel each other out. And when you have unpaired electrons, they obviously don't cancel out. And all of those little mini magnets point in the same direction, and they add up to one big magnet. So when they're all marching in lockstep, they form a magnetic field. And that can force the electrons in nearby bits of metal to temporarily fall into line as well. You've basically turned something that's not a magnet, in this case the paperclip, into a temporary magnet, which is why it sticks to the permanent one. So there are a few more subtleties than that. I could go into way more depth than that and talk about sublattices and domains and the 8 million other types of magnetism, but I don't want anybody's head to explode. If you actually do want to know more, let me know in the comments and I will make a more advanced follow-up video. And if you leave me nasty notes about how terrible this video was, I will make it a point not to like you. So that's how magnets work. See, it's not that mysterious. Thanks for watching. I've been Steve.